Right, um, so I'll be talking about uh, mobile phone security, um, da mainly data security, and, um, and this is the presentation summary. Um, just tell you a little about uh, my company, uh, who we are, what we do, and basically go through some of the analyst reports that uh, uh, we've been publishing, which really kind of feed into the presentation that, 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 w that I'm, I'm presenting on tonight. Um, and then um, some of the results from uh, a survey that we ran uh, in September last year, um, trying to get some data on um, the use of mobile phones within organizations and the security um, basically issues and threats uh, that uh, InfoSec uh, professionals uh, were seeing. And then go through a lot of this stems from um, the research that we've been doing also from my, my, my own experience. Um, we'll have a look at some of the current security threats around um, mobile phones, uh, and that includes looking at threats of virus, malware, um, data loss, um, voice eavesdropping, uh, which touches on a, a, a bit about voice security, but a lot of it is on, on uh, using voice over IP applications on a mobile phone. The issues surrounding prosu prosumer use, and what I mean there is... Um, you know, in terms of uh, working, working practices are changing quite rapidly. Uh, people work from home. People have flexible working environments. They may be using their own laptops and devices for business use. So there's a bit, bit of a blurring of the line between um, business and private life. And that has an effect on, on information security on, on a mobile device as well. Uh, look at mobile app stores. Perhaps some of the risks perhaps are surrounding um, the app store model. Um, and then look at some recommendations, look at some practical steps that uh, people can be uh, deploying in terms of mitigating some of the risks um, and some of the rising risks that, 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 we, that we see with mobile phone use. And then I'll just give a brief summary of some of the um, products and services that are out there now that perhaps can help people in terms of uh, um, uh, mitigating some of the risks as well. Okay, we're a, a specialist provider of information security, uh, mobile commerce research and analysis. Uh, we were founded in 2007 by myself. Uh, we're based in London, and we do off-the-shelf research reports. So going, you know, in competition with people like Gartner and Forrester, and we also do um, bespoke research and analysis. We've been um, spending the last about two, three years working with startup companies, technology companies, venture capital lists in terms of looking at markets and opportunities for both mobile commerce and from information security. Uh, prior to the setting up um, GI, I was I spent 20, 20 years in, uh, in both mobile commerce and information security. Um, I was uh, head of InfoSec at uh, T-Mobile for a time, head of digital security at um, Delarue, um, looking at um, identity security on getting in terms of um, passport security on, on smart cards and stuff. I work for Slomberger on the card division and, and various banks, Citibank, uh, and my last position was uh, head of um, security consultancy at uh, Atos Origin, who um, are a relatively large SI company. So, that's me. So, in terms of the, our, the series of reports, um, we've, we've produced... Um, well, we pu published one and we're working on, on two others and uh, they look into um, mobile phone as an authentication device so using uh, your phone uh, as a, a replacement for secure ID um, soft tokens, SMS based uh, delivery of uh, one time passwords etc um, and we are just about to publish our report on antivirus products and services and then we will publish another report on, on protection products, which includes uh, data loss prevention, voice encryption, um, anti-theft, and backup services. You know, there, 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 are, mar there are marketing um, reports um, that look at market sizing, um, forecasts um, for um, um, deployment, etc. But there, there is a lot about in the reports about technology as well. And when, when I was first researching the market, probably about a year ago, um, there was a lot of 
Um, in, in this industry, there's a lot of PR. You, you're really kind of um, led by the PR companies and who represent the vendors. So if you talk to a vendor and they say, oh, yeah, yeah you know, and it's going to be the year of antivirus on the mobile phone, and obviously they've got a vested interest. So what we wanted, we wanted quantitative data. We wanted real data that we could actually insert into the reports. So we worked um, with a partner called Acumen Consulting, um, who had a, a very good database of infosec um, professionals around the world to produce um, or to develop, a, 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 to do a survey um, on with with um, so to find you know what what was happening on the ground with organisations, businesses, etc. In in terms of their use of mobiles and what they were doing on with security. So if we have a little talk about the this is the um, the purpose and participants of, um, of for our survey um, published in three parts. Um, one looking at policy, but also access control and authentication. The other one looking at virus and malware, and the other one looking at the uh, the protect what I what we, we classify as protection services, which includes um, DLP, uh, voice encryption, anti theft products, uh, personal firewall backup products, that type. And it, you know the prime uh, motivation was was really to determine the state of uh, mobile security within within businesses across the globe. Um, and you can see the breakdown of the respondents here. A lot of people in finance, um, and then the rest in telecoms and, and technology. Um, with kind of specific emphasis on, there is, it, it's a quite a, 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 an interesting area because you really got a distinction between organizations that deploy BlackBerry, which is excellent security, um, and, and in, in terms of um, uh, in terms of encryption and, uh, and, and other facilities, and the emergence of the um, the trend of uh, businesses using iPhone and more open um, operating systems on, on, on mobile phones like um, iPhone and uh, and Android, and some of the issues surrounding that. So what we were looking at really is mainly emphasising the. Um, the issues surrounding some of the more open um, op operating systems. And I also include Symbian as well in that as well. Okay, so if we could look at the start off with policy and regulation, it's quite heartening to know that uh, most organizations will have a documented security policy. 96% will have a documented security policy. But only 46% of those organizations will have anything specific to mobile phone. <laughs> Now, take a step back about the context of the use of the mobile phone. In terms of processing power, we're talking about a device which is probably equates to a, a, um, a, a PC 10 years ago in terms of processing power. So it's still pretty powerful. You know, I, I run a, I've got a Google Android phone. It's, you know, I can, and I store lots of information on there. It's not, not just contact lists. We're talking applications. You can get Salesforce information on there through salesforce.com. Um, I've got PowerPoint presentations on there. Um, and there is, and we'll go on to some of the issues surrounding what people have on their, um, on their mobile phone in terms of, but we've got a much, much growing use of open platforms within business and more company business critical information that is being stored on there. So 46% of those organizations don't have anything that says, you know, that says, you know, you shouldn't install this particular application on a device or you shouldn't, um, um, you know, store company confidential or, or classified information on those devices. In terms of the AUP, which really is the, um, the most probably the uh, easy, easiest piece of um, security awareness, security policy that uh, is in the hands of most employees and, uh, and, and citizens. 40% of organizations don't cover anything in, term, in terms of the AOP, in terms of um, use of the mobile phone. And from a standards point, point of view, we asked um, the um, survey respondents whether they thought that standards like COBIT and ISO and uh, ISF, standard of good practice, whether they actually covered mobile or they, they, they were good enough for them. And 45% said the mobile was covered slightly or not at all. Which is, it's, and with my experience of policy, you know, the policies do, at a higher level, do actually have um, specific references to mobile devices, a PDA or a, 
US, USB um, device. So I think it's more of the people not understanding the policy and what's in them rather than the policy is not actually covering um, uh, mobile devices. User awareness um, of the 54% that they that do have a specific um, InfoSec policy specific to um, mobiles, 50% stated that they were either not aware or did not know whether users were aware. So they don't know whether there's any kind of a whether whether users are actually adhering to the policy. Um, regulation. 67% of respondents are governed by industry or, or state regulation, and 70% of them say that basically the mobile phone is not, um, is not covered. And from a professional awareness, and this is the talking to IT security people about what, or were they aware of the threats with, with using mobiles in, in, uh, in, in corporates and, and uh, in business, 90% felt that they didn't personally have enough information on what the threats were with, 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 with mobile phone. And it is it's a very you know, fast-moving environment, so, and it, it is very difficult sometimes for uh, people on the ground to play, to play catch-up with, especially when they're kind of, you know, it's a, it's, from, from, from my point of view, things are getting more difficult um, out there for business. Um, what with the, the rush to cloud services and virtualization, it's, uh, and to have also mobile phones coming into the mix, it's, uh, it's, it's a lot to actually, to actually take. So it's not surprising that in their defense that they're, 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 they're you know, not aware. Oops, gone backwards. Okay, in terms of the, uh, we also looked into you know, who bought mobile phones with an organization and who managed and supported them. Um, still, largely, it's in the hands of, of, of office management. So the people who are buying your, 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 your fax machines um, and your paper, ordering your paper, etc., are ordering mobile phones for, from a corporate point of view. And, um, and only 40% of InfoSec departments have an input into the procurement. So... So again, it, they're not having the, an input in, in, into, the, into the purchase of these devices. Uh, in terms of management support, just under half of mobile phones are managed by um, the IT function. And this is where we talk about prosumer. 65% um, of businesses um, basically allow employee-owned mobile phones to be used for business use. So we're talking receiving for, you know, voice, email, and mobile enterprise applications. And that has a, uh, an, an impact on, on security in terms, of, um, in terms of data protection law. And we'll go into that in a little bit, in a little bit detail. And also trying to get security products onto devices which are owned, not, not by the company. Okay. So in terms of application deployment to, 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 to the mobile phone, 80% um, feel that uh, mobile security and security is very important or important in the deployment of uh, mobile phone-based applications. Um, and and a, a comment from, from, from one of the respondents, he's saying, the sensitivity, sensitivity of general information in the company means that unencrypted mobile links are a very limiting factor. So in terms of some of the more open platforms, and I know, I know this from, from, from speaking to, to, to to, 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 these, to, the, to these people, that they're holding back from um, application deployment, you know, business applications and citizen applications to mobile phone because of, because of, of delimiting things like uh, unencrypted um, and data links and data communication. So we also, in, in the report, we looked at uh, network, network access. And what we define as network access is uh, the use of a mobile phone to access an enterprise network infrastructure, and that could be local or remote. Um, so mainly, you know, that can be using Wi-Fi or, 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 or a 3G network. So at the moment, 30% of organizations will allow uh, a, a mobile phone to connect into their, their local network using Wi-Fi. And 12% uh, of those plan to deploy within 12 months. So that's up until... Uh, September 2010. And basically, in terms of uh, a, an, a, an inhibitor of the 58% of the not supporting mobile phones or having no intention of supporting mobile phones, 40% cited policy 
as an inhibitor to allowing network access. So the policy is, I know some you know, um, investment banks and, uh, that will basically only allow BlackBerry and will only allow email and voice on, on a, Black, a BlackBerry device. So nothing else. Um, in terms of remote network access, uh, that's the mobile phone. So someone at home may be um, accessing data um, on, a, on a corporate uh, server using, using either Wi-Fi at home or, th or, or a 3G network. 42% allow remote network access on the mobile phone. And the people who, are, who don't allow it, 33% cited policy and regulation as a deterrent. 56% said um, there was no business reason. And 11% cited that didn't have the technology to support it. So one of the things of, um, one of the, um, we looked into is the mobile phone as, a, as an authenticator, as a, as a, as a two-factor um, you know, hardware token um, replacement. And no, no, no one that we polled at the moment, but 40% of organizations basically plan to deploy it um, by, by, by the end of 2011. And the technologies out there um, that allow um, the mobile phone to be used as an authentication device, uh, you have the um, server-generated one-time password that is then delivered to the mobile phone via messaging, either SMS or, mo or, or mobile email. You have a soft token installed on a mobile phone that generates the one-time password. You have also voice app authentication, um, so the user will receive an automated challenge on the voice, and they'll either hit a, uh, a hash key or enter in a PIN to then authenticate, and there's mobile PKI. I'm also seeing a lot of use in terms of transactional verification. So because there's a lot of man in the middle and man in the, man in the browser attacks, um, specific, specifically financial institutions are turning to the mobile phone as an outer band transaction verification. So you log in in a normal way, and then if you want to perhaps to transfer X amount and into a bank or do a, a remittance, then the system will then send or invoke a session with your mobile phone and an out of bound that, that then will verify the transaction. And sometimes that includes a bit of mobile PKI where the transaction will be signed and then delivered back to the authentication server. So that, in a way, helps the issues that we're seeing um, with man in the browser and uh, man in the middle attacks. Oh, by the way, if there's any questions throughout the presentation, along, just, just, just ask. But there is a 10-minute a Q&A session at the end of it as well. Okay, in terms of mobile virus, um, we looked at adoption. Uh, we asked for um, also what the current perceived risk of, of getting a, a virus on a mobile phone. Only 30% of organizations have antivirus products on the phone. Is there anybody here that has antivirus on their mobile phone? No one. Does anybody here think that they have you know, sensitive, business critical information, perhaps information about their phone on their, on their mobile phone? No one? Yes? <laughs> Pins to credit cards, perhaps? Anyway. But 54% do plan to deploy within the next 12 months. And why no? 37% feel there's no threat. 25% feel that it's, an out, it's outside of their remit, which is interesting coming from information security people. And 25% are not sure whether they have deployed. So, <laughs> But sometimes I've worked for large, large corporates and sometimes the left hand or the index finger doesn't know what the, uh, the middle finger is doing. So, um, so there's been quite a bit of hype last year, late last year. There was a, a couple of um, reported worms and um, uh, on, on iPhone, uh, jailbroken iPhones. Uh, one of them was a, 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 a homage to that well-known 1980s singer Rick Astley. And another one was uh, Never Gonna Give You Up, I think it was. And um, another one was, uh, was an, an actual a quite relatively malicious one um, targeting um, ING Bank in Holland. Um, but both, basically, a lot of them were test, testing the water, talking to some of the some, some of the AV vendors. Um, that they're saying that they were, they were kind of testing. The iPhone has been seen as quite a nice little target for um, 
um, the hacking community um, in terms of QDOS. In terms of the criminal activity, very little activity at the moment. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it when we, when we look into, 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 into virus in, the, uh, in a bit more detail. So, um, so at the moment, you know, 87% have no evidence of, of viruses on their employees' mobile phones. Seven percent of those have seen viruses, and, and again, the remaining seven percent don't know whether they have or they haven't seen one. Um, but a lot of it is: are they monitoring it? Is it something that they're looking for? If you're not, then you may not know that you may, you may have an infection. Um, and one of the areas of concern is the, is the mobile app store. Um, again, we'll have a look at that in a little more detail. In terms of perceived threat, this is, this is a kind of a, a whether, uh, how, what the threat is, or what they, what they think the perceived threat is. Uh, at the moment, the current perception is low, but rising. So for 2009, 70% classified as a low risk, um, and 21% recording a medium risk. Uh, the future threat until 2011, so the next couple of years... They 21%, that figure 71 goes down to 21 in terms of low, and then 50% state that the risk will be medium. Uh, and in terms of um, people classify it as high or very high, is, uh, 28% or 28% feel that the threat will increase. Now you've, got, you've got to be very careful with these figures because you know, sometimes the, the, these are infosec people and not, not the, the most optimistic of people. So if you ask them if things are going to get better, they'll, they'll probably say no because it affects their budget, really, but, um, but it, it, it is interesting. Uh, data voice encryption. And I've, got, I've got some more information. Just bear with me, because there is some... Um, I have some... Do, 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 do. This page turn. I've got some um, background material, which is uh, relevant, I think, to this. Is it this one? No, I don't. It's on this one. Okay, it's quite. I, I was quite um, quite surprised about the the level of people who've deployed um, data encryption on mobile phones. So, 33% of organisations have deployed data encryption on, on on the phone, and 40% plan to deploy within 12 months. And that will probably include um, BlackBerry BlackBerry devices. So, it's a, a relatively simple thing of, of turning it on at the best. Um, the remaining 20% state stated no. Why no? 45% feel that there's no threat. 11% feel that it's outside of the remit, and you can read, read the other ones. 11% say it's too difficult. It's quite surpri- I think it's quite surprising that 45% feel that there, there is no threat. Um, in terms of voice, 13% have adopted a third-party voice encryption product on, on, within their organization. So that's in addition to the, the, the A1, A2, A3, A8 algorithms that you, the operators use to, to encrypt um, uh, GSM and 3G. Um, and 14% plan to deploy within the next 12 months. I think that probably accounts, there's quite a lot of uh, financial institutions within the survey, so I think that kind of reflects it there. Um, again, 50% feel that there's no threat in terms of someone eavesdropping a voice, um, or they may have policy that says, you know, basically if you're doing anything confidential, don't use a mobile phone which is mainly, uh, when, I, when I worked in, in government, there was, you know, that basically you, sh- you were not allowed to use mobile phone for things that are classified as, as confidential. Uh, mobile backup adoption. At the moment, 27% of organizations have deployed mobile backup. Um, 73% have no products or no, no intention to deploy them. And again, 37% feel there's no threat. 64% feel that data on employee mobile phones does not require backing up. Again, it, it's this thing about 90, go back to that 90% of, the, of these professionals were not educated in some of the risks that, that are surrounding the mobile phone. Data usage. Data wiping. What we mean by data wiping, or sometimes called a kill pill, um, it's a, an anti theft. Um, and anti-theft mechanism. If you, lo- you, if you lose your mobile phone, then it's a remote method that can wipe the data on, 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 on a phone. There are, it's an interesting product because there are, there are very easy ways around this. Um, right, yeah, just take the SIM card out your phone. 
why, so why not? Why not? So 50% fill the day. Again, the data on phones does not warrant backing up, doesn't warrant virus, doesn't warrant encrypting. Okay. So if we look now into, and that's the survey, that's the results of the survey. And they're, they're very useful for us. They gave us a lot of data. And um, so if we look at some of the, in terms of, you know, the threats and risks of virus and malware. So evidence at the moment, small volumes, very small volumes of viruses out there in the wild. And what they do is not, you know, it, it may, they, may, they may delete your phone book, they may um, attempt to copy phone books or contact lists to, 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 to botnets and things like that. They're not massively malicious. So hundreds of variants as opposed to hundreds and th hundreds of thousands of viruses, variants that um, um, the antivirus vendor community will see on a daily basis. So that's in terms of, it's still, in terms of the, the criminals and the, uh, the hack, the, the, the people collecting data off, off, or being paid to collect data off, your, off, off, off desktops and laptops, etc. They're still going for the desktop. And they're still attacking Windows. But we have seen, as I mentioned earlier, on iPhone, we saw some of the emergence of viruses targeting jailbroken iPhones. And we're seeing chatter that, that, that they are turning their attention to the iPhone. You know, it's, from my experience of, of working in mobile commerce, you know, we're talking, and if we look outside of, of, of the developed world, the mobile phone is, is, the, is the prime computer and communication device um, throughout the world now. You know, we're talking three billion devices out there at the moment, and a lot of them can, can receive SMS. A lot of them can, can have commerce. You know, we're seeing mobile payments take off, in you know, places like Kenya, South Africa, Bangladesh, Philippines, millions of dollars worth of um, payments, remittances going through these networks on a daily basis. So where the money goes, you, you get the, cri the criminals attempting to, to target and, and to, 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 to defraud. So, but the AV vendors who have been, you know, saying that, you know, the next because they're, they're looking at, uh, you know, they're looking at the, 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 these three billion phones and, and, and their eyes light up in terms of the, the amount of potential subscribers out there. They're still waiting for the spike. And I like F Secure. They, they probably spent, I don't know, 10 million pounds in terms of developing their, 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 their mobile antivirus product. They've got a team of 100 developers, but they're still shifting very low volumes because people do not perceive that there is a threat out there. But from our experience, and we also in our reports look at the infrastructure security as well. So we look at the types of um, network and carrier grade um, equipment that has been installed by the operators and carriers to, to stop viruses, spam and malware at, at the network level. And they're seeing a phenomenal growth in, in what, is, what they classify as malware in their network. So they reckon this is 20 to 30 percent of all mobile messaging traffic. This comes from a, an operator. Is 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 either spam or malware. And in, and in places like China, that goes up to 50 percent. So 50 percent of their network, and that's a hell of a lot of bandwidth, is spam, malware, phishing attacks, that type of thing. A lot of this to do with, especially on the SMS level, with the the low rates, it's bundled services. It's very cheap now to send an SMS or a mobile message. And you can buy, you know, um, SIM cards for, 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 for pennies out in, out in southern China or in, in, in Shenzhen and Guangzhou. So, and you get the, the, what they're doing from the spammers, they're getting racks of, of computers, sticking in the SIM cards to there, and they're using it as a kind of a, a machine, a generator for, for, for spam. That's what they're seeing about 50%. That's a hell of a lot of traffic. So uh, an interview with um, a senior manager from uh, one of the world's largest security technology companies uh, believes the threat has not yet materialized, but it's rubbing elbows. And he, he was saying, a bit of an Americanism, that the spike is very likely to occur soon. And this is a company with no vested interest in, in, in AV. So our view is, is that the threat from mobile viruses is currently low. 
but with the rising adoption of data-centric applications on smartphones and open operating systems on, 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 on smartphones, including financial services, we feel that the threat will rise from 2010. And a lot of the AV vendors that I've spoken to are having to rethink their, um, their applications. So they're not, at the moment, it's kind of a replica of, of the engines that you see on, on the smaller scale that you see on the desktop. But they're seeing the threat, a different type of threat on a mobile phone, and they're having to re-engineer a lot of their applications to, 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 to make it mobile specific. And just a quick one on, on, on the iPhone. You know, currently doesn't have any software to protect against viruses. So, and has no, no, um, I met Apple last week and I got no intention of, of speaking to any, um, allowing any third parties to, to, to um, access um, their kernel or to write to an AV product which is, which is, which is good enough to, to be marketed. Now this could change in, with iPhone OS 4 which comes out possibly in June, July this year and there may be some sort of like snow leopard type of antivirus product on the phone. Um, but again, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an Apple product. It's not something coming from a security vendor. It's nearly as bad as the... I, I, I did spend a lot of time working on authentication and PKI and every presentation that I saw had the one where it was a dog at a PC and he said, on the internet, you don't know, you know who you're talking to. Every presentation, and I think this is going to be, this is going to, going to match it, I think. Anyway, um, data loss. Um, in terms of evidence, you know, the storage of confidential data on, on phones is rising. And if I, what am I talking about? Bear with me, please. In terms of a, um, there was a survey March 2009 by, by Creden. Again, vested interest because they sell encryption products. Um, but it's the, the research surveyed 600 commuters at a London railway station about their mobile phones and what type of sensitive information they stored on them. And 16% um, have bank account details saved on their mobile phones. 24% have their PIN numbers and passwords. Well, I must admit, I used to have one. I used to have a, an entry that said, Mr. Mint, which was a, 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 a mint card, and had the PIN number, because it was a card I, I rarely used. So, you know, hands up. I think I've deleted it. 11% um, keep social security and inland revenue details on there. 10% store credit card information on there. And 15% fail to protect their devices with a, with a, with a password. Now, does everyone um, protect their mobile phones with a pen or password here? Who, who does? Who doesn't? That's about, well, many of the, the, the eyes have it, I think. Also, you know, 90%, 99% of people use their phone for business use, um, even though 20% have not got the approval of their um, um, employers to do so. 77% um, keep business names and addresses, and 30% use the business. So it's you know it's the type of stuff that, 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 that we, we have on our desktops really, and um, you know with with SD micro cards going for I don't know tuppence now I think they are you know in terms of four gig cards it's uh, you know, they're very easy to store information on there. So the evidence is that we're, we're storing more confidential data on our phones. And the theft and loss of mobile phones is a substantial threat. Um, in terms of figures from British Transport Police, so that 45% of all reported theft on London Underground is mobile phones. And it's not surprising. You know, we've got something that's worth 400, 500 pounds. And we're, you know, when I was to get here from the hotel, I was using um, Google Maps on the phone, so I was walking around with my phone, with my Android phone. So again, it's, a, it's an easy target, really. So from um, Graham Cluley from Sophus, um, good blog, um, he was saying there is an absolute need to encrypt the data on mobile phones when used in the enterprise. I think that's a given. So, and this is the biggest issue for enterprise at the moment. The biggest thing we're seeing in terms of the uptake of any security product on a mobile phone is encryption. So data loss from <laughs> mobile phones is the biggest current risk for users storing sensitive data. And I predict that we're going to get this year a big PR story about some government agency, some from the MOD or whatever, leave, leaving a, an iPhone on the phone and having, I don't know, some blueprint for the latest Tom Hawk missile or something. Yeah. Uh, it will happen this year.
um, the, uh, the cracking overview from, from Socrip in terms of GSM. But when I worked for, for um, T-Mobile, I, I was introduced to a, a strange man in a pub once who had a, a raincoat and a South African accent. And he, offered, he, knew, he knew who I was and who I worked for. And he offered me a nice black box. £20,000, and this was in 2000, and, what that, and that was a, a, a sniffer. I could, ease, I could use that box, and, I could, and it had all the tables, all the algorithms in that particular boss, box. And I had a demonstration of it, and yet I was listening to all the, lots of conversations. What's happened in the last couple of years is that the, and I'm going to hear, you know, the GS, it has to, you know, GSM encryption is not particularly good. Um, because of the, it's quite, you, know, you need, in terms of encryption you know, with keys, and you're probably fully aware of this, you know, it, it's sometimes quite difficult to, to, to manage, especially on, you know, three billion phones. It's, uh, you need something which is relatively easy to deploy. So, it's, it's, it's possible, um, you, you know, but what's happened is the cost of cracking codes has dramatically reduced in recent years. So now that, 20 grand is probably you know, a couple of grand or something. And you, or you, you, don't, you don't need huge amounts of specialist equipment. <clears throat> so not just GSM, 3G, CDMA also targeted. And um, the known problems in using voice over IP. In one of the reasons why, and just to, to quote, um, last year at the Chaos Communication Congress in, in Berlin, which is a hacking convention, um, Carsten Knoll, basically announced that a GSM codebook had, been, uh, success, had successfully been computed and was freely available on the internet. What that does is that for $5,000 you can go out and uh, intercept GSM. It's not the most effective way of it eavesdropping on a, on, on a phone call, but basically the, the equipment that was in the domain of governments, law enforcement agencies, is now in the hands of, easily in the hands of criminals, terrorists, etc., so the market entry for intercept technology has dramatically fallen. Um, so, again, it's at low as the bar for people and organizations to create GSM calls. So confidential mobile voice calls is our recommendation, should be protected with additional measures. So that's a very small percentage, though, in terms of, in the majority of people, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, saying, oh, I'm going to be home late tonight, love, or something, when, when you're on the tube on the train. You know, the majority of mobile phone conversations aren't, don't warrant any additional encryption. So the prosumer, which is quite an interesting kind of um, um, thing, I think, um, it's the blurring of lines, really, what I alluded to earlier on. Um, use of company mobile phones for personal use and personal <coughs> mobile phones for company use. Um, so 65% of organizations that we polled allow that allow um, employees to use personal phones for, for business use. So, so some of the issues that, that, that this comes um, up with is who, who owns the data? So if I'm, you know, if, I'm a, if, I'm, if I've got a personal phone and I'm using it to store company information on there, you know, who owns, who, who is, and data protection laws being tightened, the fines are going up. So if, if I'm a CIO or a CISO or something, you know, and I know that perhaps some, someone's um, um, storing confidential information on, on a personal phone, then who's responsible? Who's going to get the fine if, that, if there is a leakage? And who's responsible for securing the mobile phone? Is it the individual, the company? And also, can you install company security technology on a personal owned device that has been used for business purposes? So there's a lot of interesting questions here. So what we, 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 we say is that organizations really need to set clear and usable policies that cover both company and employer-owned devices and ensure that appropriate te technology controls are deployed. So what I, I've given, in terms of examples of blurring the lines, I'm, I'm, I can give a couple of examples. So it's the company-owned device. <coughs> Excuse me. So an employee is using uh, Wi-Fi at home to access home broadband service and downloads inappropriate material, por pornography or something. The phone is left in the back of a cab um, after a Friday night drink or something and the user doesn't have a pin protecting the phone. The cabbie picks it up and browses through the phone and discovers that there, there's in an inappropriate material on that phone. Then the cabbie knows that his ride works for a well-known legal firm that basically works in particular areas. Now, 
that, that could be very, very sensitive for that particular legal firm. Now, I know there's a, there's a uh, being a South London boy, I know that uh, there is a, a, a bit of a, a black market for, 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 for lost stolen mobile phones in terms of earning a little bit of extra revenue for the cab drivers, the, the black cab drivers. In terms of a personal own, own device, uh, an employee is using their personal iPhone. Um, it could be any device, and it's not just an iPhone, it could be any device that, um, that um, um, can connect or uses a, an app store, an application store. And downloads a generic application that offers, the chance, offers them the chance to access all their bank accounts on one, one application. So it basically it, uh, allows them to access their private, their personal banking, etc. On, 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 on the one application. Unfortunately, the application contains malicious code. And as well as harvesting his banking credentials, it is copying itself to all recipients in the phone contact list, company emails, etc. And accessing all of the, the social networking sites that the user is automatically logged on to on, on their mobile device. So your Twitters, your Facebooks, yeah, your MySpace, which is, can be always connected onto there. Or you, you're, you're already logged on. So with, with the malware on the phone, it can then access all those accounts and starts to propagate itself through, through those channels. And that is something that, that, that can happen. And, and the, the, um, on, um, on Android Store, there was an example called Droid009, which was an example, which, um, speaking to Google, they deny it was anything malicious in the code, but, but they actually quickly withdrew it. And this was a generic application, a banking application, that was um, 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 offering you know, the users that, that, that very same thing. It was actually, there was, and there was a lot of um, discussion um, that, 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 that was one of the first pieces of the malware for the, for the Android. So if we go on to app stores, now this is, this is um, looking at the total number of applications that have been downloaded from the and respect to that. And unsurprisingly, the number one leader at the moment is Apple. Hunt nearly 151,000 separate applications, 2 billion application downloads in an 18-month period, which is phenomenal. Most of them free, I expect. But, you know, <clears throat> do you know what you're downloading and can you trust the content? And again, looking at the, the Google Android marketplace, they withdrew an application as it reportedly contained malicious code. There is limited, I've spoken to Apple, I've spoken to um, Symbian, I have to, spoken to um, Google, and there is limited or no checks in the applications in the stores. Because with that volume, if you're doing code checks on all, all, every code, you can't do it. A guy, uh, my, Sam Curry, who's the CTO of marketing at um, RSA, EMC, he's, he's worked it out, and he thinks the supply chain's been exceeded. So he reckons that he's, he's done a... <laughs> And he's got a physics degree as well, so it helps him in this. He reckons that it's, it will cost Apple $100 million a year to co-check every application. And also, it would be a massive logjam in terms of get, get, get getting all those lovely applications and the ones where the beer drinking one, which I think is very good. Um, but all, all those free applications on there, it would really reduce, reduce the, the, their business model here. And also, in terms of the, and when you do have a signed application model, but when you, like the Symbian does, you know, there are examples that, that you know, Symbian's had a couple, probably on, on the previous version of, 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 of Symbian. Um, and their security guy said it's been plugged now. But there are examples in the Far East of having, of signing an application and then finding out later on that that, that was being used maliciously. So that's the volume. Now, it's speaking to, it's interesting, it's an interesting, speaking to a lot of the um, gurus in, in InfoSec, um, Graham Cluley, every, every time every time something security comes on, he's on News24. He feels that the App Store will not be the biggest threat for virus infection on malware. He, reckon, he reckons there's a good model in the App Stores because you can quickly remove the application. If, you, if it's found to be malicious, you can quickly remove it from, from the app, app Store. So it reduces its chance of being, being propagated. He reckons that um, as phones become more capable, faster processing, because, and, and have the capability of running the, 
the desktop, desktop equivalents of, of, of Java, Flash, etc. Some of the, the apps that have seen um, attacks, quite, quite prolific attacks on, then we'll start to see more. Once this becomes more of a desktop computer in terms of browser capability, etc., excuse me, then you'll see more vulnerabilities come that way rather than the App Store. But, you know, people from, from RSA and spokespeople from McAvee have, um, have, 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 have counteracted that. So, how many people have downloaded um, a, a mobile app to their phone? Keep your hands up if you, if you save 100% certainty what you know, what, what that code's doing. Especially the free ones. And I, I've done it myself. So, in terms of coming, coming, to, the, coming to the conclusions now, um, our recommendations, and we're not, we're not a consultancy, we're a research and analysis company, um, but in terms of recommendations, you know, and to, for mobile phone security, it's educate your users on the risks, educate yourself on the risks, reflect the risks in policy and procedure, carry out a mobile phone audit, so, you know, um, who's using what, and uh, I know that some of the like PwC and KPMG are doing, having much more inquiries regarding mobile phone audits at the moment. Uh, ensure that security is inserted in procurement procedures for the purchase of the mobile phones. Clarify the issue in terms of policy on use of the, the prosumer in terms of mobile phones for company purposes, <coughs> personal mobile phones for company purposes. Monitor the effectiveness of policy and technical controls. And the, the, these are common sense ones in terms of for, for, for InfoSec. And deploy appropriate technology controls. So I mentioned, you know, in terms of a couple of security, that there are, you know, it's a, it's a growing area. There are more and more specialist companies that are uh, producing um, security applications for phones. And here are some of them, some of them in the mobile 2FA space, antivirus encryption and voice encryption. So it's more kind of an information thing. If you want to find out more, um, our, the surveys that I reference are av available to download from the website goodintelligence.com. Um, and um, that is it. Um, thank you very much. Is there any questions?